is divine service setting three without Holy Communion, starting on page 184 in the front of the hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Where you have delivered my soul. 
of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the reading for lesson today.
24th chapter, verses 13 to 35. Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended 
said to Baal, the third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended to heaven, and I stood at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue by singing the sermon hymn. The first four verses of hymn 563, Thy Blood and Righteousness. Jesus, Thy Blood and Righteousness.
seven. The number of completion. Now, as you look at the Emmaus disciples, we find them being incomplete. We find them being closed and needing to be opened. Because they only had half the story. They needed the other half of the story. They needed more information. They needed more input. And here was the problem with the Emmaus disciples. They were stuck. It's like being stuck in the mud. Dead center, right in the middle of the road. And this is what made them stuck. They were stuck on Jesus' dock upon a cross on Good Friday and placed the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea. That's it. That's as far as they got. They were finished. They were done. And so they were going down the wrong road. Need to be moved over to go down the right road. They were going the wrong way. Needing to go the right way. They were closed and they needed to be opened. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they knew that the disciples were in trouble. He took it upon himself to be with them and appear to them. And a fully resurrected body. A body with a mind, a heart, and a soul. A body with eyes and ears. A body that could walk and talk and be with them. And the disciples, as they looked at him, were not permitted to recognize him. And so he was a stranger to them. And as he was a stranger to them, and as he began to walk with the Emmaus disciples, he asked them, Hey! What you guys talking about anyway? And Cleopas answered, Who are you? And where have you come from? Did you just get off the boat or what? Did you just come off the farm or what? Everybody's talking about it. It's the buzz all around. Jesus of Nazareth. How he was a mighty prophet of God. How he went around doing good by word and deed, but how our chief priests condemned him and put him to death by crucifixion. Everybody's talking about it. It's blowing up all over the internet. It's blowing up all over social media. And did you know? Did you know that some of our women went to the tomb earlier this morning to anoint his body? according to the Jewish custom, and they came back with all this crazy talk out of their minds. They said they had this vision of angels. They said the angels told them that he is not dead, but he is alive, and they told us that the body is gone and not even there. So some of us, Simon, Peter, and John, ran to the tomb to check it out, and it was just as the women had said. There was no body. But the burial linens were hardened. And there was no cut and there was no seam. And there was no body. What in the world is that all about anyway? And here's the big thing. You know, we thought that he was the one. We thought that he was the one who would redeem Israel, according to the mindset of the Israelites. That he would be the one who would overthrow the harsh Roman oppressive government. That he would be the one who would elevate the Jews to be the ruling class of the world, having all people serve them. That he would be their bread king, and he would feed them every day without them having to do one ounce of work. Now he's dead. And now he's gone. So forget all that. Not going to happen. Because dead is dead. And gone is gone. The Emmaus disciples were closed. They needed to be open. So the stranger became Jesus the teacher. Again, teaching his students, his disciples. He began with the question.
condemnation. But was it not necessary that the Christ must suffer these things and then enter into glory? And the eyes of the disciples got as big as the moon. And they heard the words and they said, yeah, yeah. And now the clothes are starting to be open. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he spoke to the Emmaus disciples. And he opened the sacred scriptures to them concerning himself and his death and his resurrection. Because that's what all the sacred scriptures are about. Jesus being the Savior and the Redeemer. His death and his resurrection. That's the lens we use to look at the scriptures, to have the scriptures interpreted correctly to us. Because if we do not use the lens of Jesus and his death and resurrection, the scriptures become closed. The scriptures become nothing more than a book of rules and regulations. Oh, you got to do these ten things over here. Oh, you got to do these twelve things over here. Oh, you got to do this, and you got to do this, and you can't do this, and you can't do that. Because it's all up to you. You've got to buy God's love and grace and mercy and forgiveness and salvation. There's two kinds of religions in this life of this world. It is done, or you got to do it. So Jesus, he opened the scriptures to the Emmaus disciples by using himself, his death and resurrection, as the Lamb. And now the clothes are starting to become opened. The closed hearts and minds and souls, the blind eyes and the ears that were stopped. They had made it to Emmaus, the seven mile journey. Seven is the number of completion. The Emmaus disciples were incomplete at this point. Jesus acted as if he was going further. But they urged him to stay with them, and now it was supper time. So Jesus went into the house with them. They reclined at table. Jesus took the bread, and he blessed it, and he broke it, and they, he gave it to the Emmaus disciples. Deja vu. Man, this looks really familiar. Man, we have seen this before someplace else. Oh yeah, in the feeding of the 4,000. Oh yeah, in the feeding of the 5,000. Oh yeah, Monday, Thursday evening in the upper room as Jesus instituted the sacrament of Holy Communion at the end of the celebration of the Seder Passover meal. The text tells us, the Emmaus disciples saw Jesus do this and heard Jesus do this their eyes were open. They recognized who Jesus was. This is their Jesus. This is their Lord, their Savior, their Redeemer. And they realized and understood a couple other really important things. He's not dead. He's alive. Risen from the dead. Resurrected from now he will be with his people and with his disciples, being fully God and man in different forms. We are formed by his forms, by his baptism, by his holy absolution, by his holy communion, by his words spoken and heard in a law and gospel manner. And now he's the man's disciples who were incomplete, were now made complete in Christ. Now they who were closed were now opened. Their hearts, their minds, their souls, their eyes and their ears to recognize the old familiar voice and old familiar words of the Good Shepherd. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes down from above and from the outside to open that Now it comes down to you, and now it comes down to me. It's a time when you and I were going down the wrong road. A time when you and I were going the wrong way. A time when you and I were incomplete and needed to be made complete in Christ.
Christ. So Jesus made the pilgrimage, came down from above and from the outside, and he met us at the waters of the baptismal pond. And we heard the old familiar voice, and we heard the old familiar words. We died in the death of Christ. We were resurrected in the resurrection of Christ, and we became a new creation. As he gave to you and me the gift of faith, by grace. And now our hearts and our souls and our minds were open. Now our eyes were open so we could see Jesus where he promises to be. Now our ears that were plugged were open so you and I could recognize the old familiar voice and the old familiar words of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Our baptism, the time when we who were closed were open by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now it comes down to you, and now it comes down to me. You and I live in the same fallen, broken world as did the Emmaus disciples. The things that made them stuck were this. They had to deal with all these things that happened really fast, these big things outside of their control about which they could do nothing. Jesus being arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus having to undergo the trial under the high priest Caiaphas and the Pharisees of the Sanhedrin. Jesus having to undergo his trial with Pontius Pilate. Jesus dying upon the cross on the Good Friday. So too as it happens to you and me, when these big things happen really close together, we do find ourselves being closed off, being isolated, and pulling inside. We too then begin to do what the disciples did in the gospel lesson for today. We begin to focus and fixate on all these things that are outside of our control, about which we can do nothing. And when it happens, all of our focus is placed upon all this stuff about which you and I can do nothing. So then we take our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our ears off our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the sacred scriptures, his words, and his promises. We all have the sinful flesh, me and every one of you, me and every one of you, we all fall short. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who does not fall short. He came down from above and from the outside, conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, to open that which is closed. And his death and resurrection, to open the gates of heaven for you and me. And his death and resurrection, to open the gateway to our Heavenly Father for you and me. For it is written, no one comes to the Father except through the Son. Only way to the Holy Father is by having faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior and Redeemer. And he is the Redeemer of Israel and the Redeemer of you and me, not according to the possible Jewish mindset, but fulfilling the words and promises of sacred scripture. To redeem means to buy back and to pay the price in full. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ came down from above and from the outside to pay the redeeming price in full, to buy us back from being held in eternal bondage to sin and Satan and death, being fully God and fully man, and becoming the perfect sacrifice and giving it all up. All of his life, all of his body, all of his blood, to conquer and defeat all of sin and all of Satan and all of death. So you and I can have all of life and all of forgiveness and all of salvation. So you and I can no longer be closed, but now we are open and having faith in Jesus as our Redeemer, as our Savior, in his life and his death and his resurrection. Now it comes back to you, and now it comes back to me. The Emmaus disciples made their pilgrimage from Jerusalem.
down to Emmaus. And then when they recognized Jesus, they ran as fast as they could back up to Jerusalem to find the disciples in hiding in the house of Jerusalem and share with them the good news. Now our job is to make our pilgrimage from the baptism of Juan to the new Jerusalem, the promised land. And as you and I do, you and I are like the Emmaus disciples in this way. They believe the Redeemer should be the one who would overthrow the oppressive Roman government, who would elevate the Jews to be the ruling class of the world, to have Jesus as their bread king. As you and I go through life, we establish dreams and objectives and goals. We work as hard as we can to achieve those dreams and objectives and goals. And then life happens. This thing happens outside of our control. That thing happens outside of our control. This thing happens outside of our control. And the door begins to close. We begin to realize we're not going to be able to accomplish that dream or that objective or that goal. So then our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ comes to be with you and me like he did with the Emmaus disciples. And he reminds you and me, he never closed the door over here without opening up another door over here. He never closed the window over here with opening up another window over here. He gets us to come to a dead stop and assess our skill set, who we are, what we are, our strengths and our weaknesses. He gets us to think about other options and other alternatives and take one step back and decide the best way to go is down road B over here. So we do. By the love and grace of God, we're able to accomplish our dream and our objective and our goal. And after a little while, we take one step back and look. We go, oh yeah, this is who and what I ought to be doing this thing right here in this time and place and space. It was a bad idea, that other dream, that other goal, that other objective. And as this happens, we who are incomplete can become complete in Christ. We who were closed have now become open in Christ. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ went down from above and from the outside. But with that, as you and I take a step back and look at what's happening in the gospel lesson for today, we know the time and the place and the space and what's happening. This all happened on Easter Sunday, Sunday, the seventh day, the Sabbath day. Our God created the heavens and the earth in six days, and he rested on the seventh, making Sabbath day for you and you. It's the day we come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day. So our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ can come down from above and from the outside to attend to our spiritual needs so that we do not become closed, but we can remain open in, with, and under Him. This is the place we come where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ serves to us the blessed sacrament of Holy Communion, where He takes the bread. He blesses it, he breaks it. He says, take and eat. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take and drink. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. So you and I can be washed and cleansed and purified, regenerated, renewed, and reconciled. Made to be at peace with God, at peace with ourselves, at peace with our neighbor. As you and I eat of his body and drink of his blood, you and I partake of that which has lived a perfect life, died upon the cross, and resurrected again on the third day, defeating all of sin and all of Satan and all of death for all of eternity. So you and I, as we eat of his body and drink of his blood, receive that which provides healing to the body, the mind, the spirit, the soul. So you and I do not get closed, but
that you and I remain open in with and under our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the text for today, we find that as Jesus looked up with the Emmaus disciples, that he became their teacher. He did the talking, and they did the listening. We come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day to come in the presence of Jesus, our good shepherd, so we can hear the old familiar voice and the old familiar words of the Master. So we can give to us instruction and correction and direction for our daily life so we can keep off going down the wrong road and the wrong way and keep going down the right road and the right way. And to remind you that you and I have an awesome Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we make our pilgrimage from the baptism of Lot to the promised land, he is with us all day and all the way to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, to watch over, take care of us, and provide for us in all of life and all of death and all of resurrection. To remind us that when we hit the bad times, to take all bad things and we'll change them into all things remind us that for those times we are weak and weary, he is our strength. To remind us that as we live these final days of all the uncertainty and all the insurity of the economy, of the weather, of what's happening in our world, our society, our culture, he is the solid rock upon which we stand. He comes to us to remind us that he is our present help in all times of trouble all power and authority in the heaven and the earth have been given to him. There's no problem too big he cannot handle. There's no concern too small. And as he keeps his words and promises, he keeps us from becoming closed, he keeps us to remain open in him. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of Israel, the one that you and I can always count on, one that you and I can always depend upon, you and I can always trust in, no matter what. Today, tomorrow, and even for all of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. And on the peace of God, which pass the human understanding, may it bless you, faith, life everlasting. Amen. And now let us stand and sing the creation me. <coughs>
is a but of life, that, Ron, Parker, and thank you for your goodness toward him. And gratefully but mercifully given unto him, strength, friends, relatives, pleasure to all all, your gospel promise of peace and forgiveness. Dear Lord, as Ron marks the passing of one year and the beginning of a new year, crown your fetch first upon him through your word and sacraments. <coughs> Lord, in your mercy. Hear what a wife, that, Bobby Gall, Junior Pullman, Wayne Needham, Noel Rath, Pauline Prex, Janet Stutwich, Deb Raffi, Arlen Raffi. I graciously receive healing and strength from you. Today with us might be thankful in sickness and health. They might grant the strength to accept your will for their chapter eternal lives, visit them in their afflictions, and empower them through your word and the promise of your love. Lord, in your mercy. All-powerful Creator, to be praise you for blessing the earth to make it fruitful. Bring forth in abundance whatever is needed for this one of our lives. Cross we employ you the work of branch of farmers. Grant us a proper weather of sunshine and moisture, that we may both have a seed time and a gathering of fruits of the earth Thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we could all whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Lord, may your kingdom be just to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue by singing the Thanksgiving hymn. Hymn 685, Let us ever walk with Jesus. Thank you.
God from the citation and better Thomas. The Lord be with you.